this morning is Deborah Lee Baldwin. She's world famous, succulent um, queen of the world. Um, I've been growing cactus and succulents since the early 70s. And what I love about Deborah with her books, she literally puts succulents on the map. Oh, there's a puppy. I'm used to being upstaged, but seldom by anything so cute. That's a hint, Tom. <laughs> Here, I thought I was the cute one today. Oh, well. We've got so many cool things to show you about succulents, and this is such a cool place. And you know, I say this every time Tom and I are on stage together, that despite his aspirations to being a stand-up comedian, there's nothing he doesn't know about water-wise plants for your garden. <laughs> so Tom, here's my question for you. You know how you, you absolutely love agave moonshine yes, over do. here? Yes. Okay, did you name it? Yes. Uh oh, because guess what I got when I googled agave moonshine? Mm. How to make tequila. <laughs> so what's the problem? Right? So what's the problem? <laughs> okay, we just have some goofy and interesting and fun succulents with personality to show you today. This is in my private collection. I love plants and presentations with whimsy. Uh, I don't like to go into the excessively cute, but I like something that makes you look twice and that is fun to look at over and over again. So the stand I got at the Goodwill, it's just a circle with feet and the, uh, what looks like a mug, but it, it's sort of like two ears came from the Succulent Cafe. And then in it, is an aloe hemming eye. I thought the combination looked like a jester, so I added little beads to the tips. I like to drop by the nursery just with my cell phone and say, Tom, what have you got that you're excited about that you wish people knew more about? And then we'll do a video together. And this happened to be one of them. How many of you saw the video? Four people, I've gone viral! <laughs> or my newsletter is what will tell you when I've released a new video, tell you what to watch for. You know, the, the question I get asked most these days is, are you doing another book? Are you coming out with another book? My focus is my newsletter. That to me is the most current, the most fun. It brings out all of my photojournalism skills. It's my passion. The books are a great trilogy, and I've said all I need to say in book form. Now I'm bringing you what I'm most excited and interested in and eager to share. So sign up uh, for my newsletter. I'll, I just need your name and uh, your birth date and social security number. <laughs> okay. That as Tom and I were strolling the nursery late in the afternoon and the light was gorgeous for photography, he stopped in front of this patch of moonstones. No particular help or nurturing or anything like that. Kind of like my life story. And, <laughs> and so I go down there and look at it like at two and a half years later, full sun, Forgot to be watered most of the time and everything like that. And it's this beautiful tight mound. Yeah. The only thing that's fragile about it is handling. Yeah. So the leaves fall off. Yeah. You know, succulents, like most living things, are all about survival and reproduction. And that's what these plants want to do. They want those leaves to fall off. That's why they're so tenuously connected mm -hmm. to their stems. Yeah. Because once they fall off, they can produce a whole new plant and roots from the stem end where the, those growth cells are. So it, it actually wants you to be clumsy with it, so don't indulge it, because it'll lose its beautiful symmetry. Also, it is covered with a very fine powder uh, called virulence, and when you touch that, that powder will come off, and, and it's, a, it's a protective sunscreen for the plant. I thought that once you touched it and the powder came off, it would never come back, but this plant, I looked at it again after, after I shot the photo of several months later and the, the yeah, color, it, 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 it yeah. regenerated. You can see the marks on her photo. That's yeah. just like a, where it's smudged off with the thumb or something. Yeah. It's kind of like the same material that's on grapes a little bit. Now you might know of Choya as the jumping Choya. Uh, in fact, I have a, a really humiliating video of myself getting stuck by one on my YouTube channel. <laughs> 
the video about Rancho La Puerta when I was down in Mexico and I was showing off to a friend my knowledge of the indigenous cacti down in Tecate. And I happened to just kind of reach toward a cholla, and darn if the thing didn't jump onto my finger. And then I'm shaking it, and it rolled onto the back of my hand. And she got, my friend, got all this on video. Well, you, actually, you can hear her gasping in the background, like, <gasps> because that's how the plant propagates. It wants to travel with you. <laughs> so I'm putting the little cholla back. Ah, look at that. Oh. Oh my gosh, look at that. And that's what they do. <laughs> Ow. It's a great security fence. It's beautiful in bloom. They do have beautiful flowers. It's Cilintra puntia, which is related to Apuntia, and of course Apuntia is one of uh, Tom's great loves because of the enormous, gorgeous flowers. Oh, and it glows beautifully when backlit because the spines are translucent. It's a habitat for native birds. They can nest inside of there. They're safe from predation. And you know what? We've had um, clients buy large amounts of our choyas and plant them along the fences where they had horrible security problems. People were cutting the wires, cutting the fences, invading the property. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I'm the one who would be caught by it, right? Because you're out in your garden. So I'm a big fan of uh, spineless Apuntia, the paddle cactus without the spines, because you know it's not going to get you, but the trespassers don't. So there's more about spineless Apuntia or spineless paddle cactus on my website. Right. Oh, you can have your spineless and eat it too. Oh, you that's know. true. Yeah. Because, yeah. No polis. Right. No polis. No polis. There, there is the new variety, Apuntia lisiana, and it was uh, uh, pretty much Lysiana. introduced by uh -huh. Mountain State uh -huh. Nursery in uh -huh. Arizona, but it's turning out to be a really good no polis cactus. It actually is the most spineless, thornless, prickly pear cactus that I've ever seen. And when are we going to see it come out? Uh, probably we'll start having it by late summer and fall. Fantastic. And uh, I'll, I'll definitely get the word out. And it's hardy way down to almost zero. My big problem though, I love this plant. It's statuesque, it's sculptural, everything about it's terrific and I can eat it when the famine comes, all of that. But it's never flowered for me in the five years I've grown it. They're not good flowers. No. no forget it. You know. No. That's, that's such a disappointment. Okay, well, you can't have everything. I love how the, uh, the nursery always keeps its planted bathtub looking beautiful. And <laughs> you can't beat it, it's got built-in drainage, right? <laughs> the burrow's tail looks like soap, bu soap bubbles or overflowing water. This one was done by no other than my lovely wife, Jackie Jesh, a photographer and a great writer as well. And so you can always locate Jackie on her website, on her blog, and see her work everywhere around the nursery. Don't you love it when you go to a nursery and there it has certain aspects that you look forward to seeing and you you, you know it's it's if you saw a photo of it you know where it was. The bathtub is one of them, the hillside with the stripes of color and the goofy manager. I mean those are those are the things that you look forward to when you come to Waterwise. And he's been waiting for this moment, people, so stand back because he's gonna introduce you to Crikey. These jaguars out there, jaguars. <laughs> Nothing that's gonna hurt you. It's all right. This is Mangabi Jaguar. <laughs> Didn't you love his his Texas accent? <laughs> so Mangabes. That's El Paso, Australia. By the way. <laughs> I I predict, and you heard it here first, or on my newsletter if you subscribe that mangaves are going to be the it succulent of the 2020s. They are an intergeneric cross of manfreda and agave. There's a lot of them are native to some of the uh, desert areas uh, of, or regions, inland regions of Texas and things like that. And I have been trialing them, some hybrids, in my own garden. So see the unboxing on YouTube and the squeals of delight. The, the broad-leaved mangaves made it through the storms just fine, but the thinner ones, I think they have more manfreda in them. Well, first they got overwatered from the rain, then they froze, and then the hail finished them off. And yet, other mangaves look better than ever. 
So it's a process of learning and growing them, which I'm cheerfully and happily doing, and will pass along what I discover to you. Now, someone told me earlier, I can't get them anywhere. Well, no, you're just, we're just on the cusp of them being more available. It's kind of a chicken and the egg thing. There has to be a demand for nurseries to carry them, but nurseries have to carry them so that people can get them. I love how cactus doesn't take itself too seriously. This is Cleostocactus strasii, or the silver torch, and it looks like a bug. And you just never know what they're gonna look like when they bloom, which is the case with a, a lot of cactus. Sometimes their true personality and their sense of humor comes out when they flower. So it's a beautiful plant. Uh, full grown, it can get to be almost six or seven feet tall, and a lot of times it'll have a few more uh, columns come up from the base, but you know how we talked about backlighting on cactus ah, thorns? This yeah. is an amazing one because it's literally silver spires, and when the Nothing light comes like through it. the evening or morning sun, it's like a halo. My, my big passion is designing with succulents, and in fact, that's you know the name of my book, Designing with Succulents, which came out first in 07, and then there's the second edition that just came out with 10 years of updates. Um, but Tom is also a terrific designer. Thank you. And, and it's, not, it's not all that strange when you realize that when you have worked with the plants and grown them and cultivated them and helped people put them in their gardens, you get a sense for what works, what looks right, how low or how high something will grow. Other succulent nursery owners who became outstanding landscape designers right. specializing in succulents. Uh, Jeff Moore yeah. of Solana Succulents, who was here yesterday, has a new book coming out this year on the, the spiny cacti and other spiny succulents. And now, Laura Eubanks. Laura never owned a nursery. Oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Designer. Oh, can you believe the energy that woman has? Yeah. And working out in the full sun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And shouting from the top of her mini mountain. Well, she's used to that with her husband. Yeah. That's, oh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. From a design standpoint, you can't go wrong with drifts and multiples. So you want the eye to follow a lovely curved line. The drifts emphasize color. So look at how with no flowers, but just foliage colors themselves, you can orient some drifts of succulent color that's durable and lasts for years. And so that's kind of fun. We do kind of like that annual color look with with the uh, foliage colors. This is a, a little Echinoceras rubris venus. It just makes you want to stand up and dance, doesn't it? They're not very big. And they have such personality. Oh, spines rainbow colors. And of all the cacti that, that I first fell in love with because of their symmetry and the arrangement of the spines, it was this one. Because when you look right down on it, rings of color are stunningly beautiful. And it's a petable cactus. You can come down on it with the palm of your hand and it won't bite you. It's like a emotional support cactus. Oh, what do you call it? Therapy cactus. <laughs> therapy cactus. Yeah, therapy that. cactus. That's the buds there, but the flower opens up to be bigger than that. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, it has a phenomenal. Beautiful magenta flower. Magenta. Yeah. Bright, hot pink, Barbie doll pink flowers. Barbie doll, what made me think of that? <laughs> because so. you're sitting next to Ken. I'm speechless. <laughs>